Dear learners, welcome to the chapter on information systems in digital age. This session will have a discussion on system and subsystems, types and characteristics of a system, organization as a system, and various organization structures. Let us understand what is a system. A system is a collection of elements or components, that are organized for a common purpose. It is described by its spatial and temporal boundaries, surrounded and influenced by its environment, described by its structure and purpose, and expressed in its functioning. It is an array of components, that work together to achieve a common, or multiple goals, by accepting input, processing it, and producing output in an organized manner. When we view a system, Many at times it is visible that, it is not be restricted to a single goal. A system often consists of several subsystems, which are components of a larger system, each with specific sub-goal. All subsystems contribute to meet the main goal, by receiving inputs from, and transferred to, other subsystems of a system. Thus, an information system is study of systems, with a specific reference to information and the complementary networks of hardware and software, that people and organizations use to collect, filter, process, create, and also distribute data. An emphasis is placed on an information system having a definitive boundary, users, processors, storage, inputs, outputs, and the aforementioned communication networks. Let us also understand what is a subsystem. A subsystem is a self-contained system in a larger system. A subsystem is where work is processed on the system. It is a single, predefined operating environment, through which the system coordinates the workflow and resource use. A system can contain several subsystems, all operating independently of each other. Subsystems manage resources. All jobs, with the exception of system jobs, run within subsystems. Each subsystem can run unique operations. For instance, one subsystem may be set up to handle only interactive jobs, while another subsystem handles only batch jobs. Subsystems can also be designed to handle many types of work. The system allows you to decide the number of subsystems, and what types of work each subsystem handles. We will now discuss, the types of systems. There are various categories of systems which are discussed here. Physical or abstract. Physical system is tangible entities that may be static or dynamic in nature. Abstract system is conceptual or non-physical. The abstract is conceptualization of physical situations. Open and closed. An open system continually interacts with its environment. It receives input from the outside and delivers output to outside. A closed system is isolated from environment influences. Permanent and temporary system. A permanent system is a system enduring for a time span, that is long relative to the operation of human. Temporary system is one having a short time span. Natural and man-made. System which is made by man is called man-made system. Systems which are in the environment made by nature are called natural system. Deterministic and probabilistic. A deterministic system is one, in which the occurrence of all events is perfectly predictable. If we get the description of the system state at a particular time, the next state can be easily predicted. Probabilistic system is one, in which, the occurrence of events cannot be perfectly predicted. A system possesses certain properties. Let's discuss the points. A system is a single entity. Components of system interact with each other. Systems are goal-seeking and have definite objectives to meet. Systems have input and output. System transforms input into output. It performs processing. System exhibits entropy. 
It behaves awkwardly when exposed randomly to unrecognized variable. Systems must be controlled for effective output. Systems forms the hierarchy and the components of the system works in hierarchical way. Systems exhibits differentiation as various systems exhibits different properties. System exhibits equifinality. It can reach a given end state of any task in many potential means. As a system, any business organization possess all the characteristics that are defined above. Let us now discuss various organization structures and the information requirement. To understand the organization structure, one should have clarity on what is an organization. An organization is a social arrangement which pursues collective goals, controls its own performance, and has a boundary separating it from the outer world. Organization is categorized in three ways. First, a process or phenomenon related which is exhibited as task or action to put a matter in order. Second, entity related. These organizations are entities like businesses or state authorities, having a definite structure. And third, organization which are institutional, and have an actual purposeful structure within a social context. Example, a marriage. From management perspective in modern business, a business organization falls in the second category. When we talk of organization structure, they are of many types. Pyramid or hierarchical, committees, and juries, cyclic structure, matrix structure, ecologic structure, chaotic structure, and staff organizations or cross-functional teams. The arrangement of resources would lead to the formation of the structure of the organization. Depending upon the structural arrangement, the organization could be categorized as above. From business organization's perspective, we will discuss pyramidal and matrix structure in detail. The pyramidal structure of organization comprises of strategic level, tactical level, operational level, and shop floor workers. The strategic management level is at the top of the pyramid, decides on what is to be done and uses information system components such as expert system, decision support system, and executive information system. The tactical level formulates the strategy on how a job to be done, and used support systems like decision support system, and executive information system. The operation level management manages the job and generally work on higher transaction processing system. The bottom of the pyramid comprises of shop floor level that performs the job, works at the boundary of a system, and use transaction processing system to record the daily transactions. Strategic level. They are highest ranking officers. President, vice president falls into this category. They make decisions having impact in the long run such as merger and acquisition, global expansion, developing new product and services moving operations online, restructuring the organizations, diversification and starting new verticals, and so on. Tactical level. Also known as middle managers. Receive guidelines from superiors, make decisions for subordinates, take decisions which affect near or somewhat distant future, charge of several operational managers, responsible for finding best means, tactics, to accomplish the job. They focus on how to do a job. Operational level. They are in charge of frontline workers. Example, department manager or a branch manager. They are authorized to obligate the company with limited operation like release of small amount of money. They follow general policies handed down by their superiors. They take decisions that affect their units in short term such as assigning alternate duties to shop floor workers, and so on. Shop floor level. They are the largest group of employees. Example, service workers, tellers in banks, receptionists, sales associate, production employees. They are not decision-making personnel. They do not participate in management judgments even if they have the expertise. They work at the boundary of a system where they interact with the outside people. Their working includes taking orders of the products, 
provide customer service, record sales, issue invoices, record shipments, provide maintenance services and similar operations. The information requirement at various levels of management is distinct. A more functional classification of information is on the basis of types of decisions. Information, required at different levels of management can be classified as operational, tactical, and strategic. Operational information. Operational information relates to the day-to-day -day operations of the organization, and thus, is useful in exercising control over the operations, that are repetitive in nature. Since such activities are controlled at lower levels of management, operational information is needed by the lower management. For example, the information regarding the cash position on a day-to-day -day basis, is monitored and controlled at the lower levels of management. Similarly, in marketing function, daily and weekly sales information, is used by lower level manager, to monitor the performance of the sales force. It may be noted, that operational information pertains to activities that are easily measurable by specific standards. The operational information mainly relates to current and historical performance and is based primarily on internal sources of data. The predictive element in operational information is quite low and if at all it is there, it has a short-term horizon. Tactical information. Tactical information helps middle-level managers allocating resources and establishing controls to implement the top-level plans of the organization. For example, information regarding the alternative sources of funds and their use is in the short run, opportunities for deployment of surplus funds and short-term securities, and so on, may be required at the middle levels of management. The tactical information is generally predictive, focusing on short-term trends. It may be partly current and partly historical and may come from internal as well as external sources. Strategic Information While the operational information is needed to find out how the given activity can be performed better, strategic information is needed for making choices among the business options. The strategic information helps in identifying and evaluating these options so that a manager makes informed choices which are different from the competitors, and the limitations of what the rivals are doing or planning to do. Such choices are made by leaders only. Strategic information is used by managers to define goals and priorities, initiate new programs, and develop policies for acquisition and use of corporate resources. For example, information regarding the long-term needs of funds for ongoing and future projects of the company may be used by top-level managers in taking decision regarding going public or approaching financial institutions for term loan. Strategic information is predictive in nature, relies heavily on external sources of data, has a long-term perspective, and is mostly in summary form. It may sometimes include what-if scenarios. However, the strategic information is not only external information. For long, it was believed that strategic information is basically information regarding the external environment. However, it is now well recognized that the internal factors are equally responsible for success or failures of strategies and thus, internal information is also required for strategic decision making. The another organization structure that we will discuss from business organization's perspective is matrix structure of an organization. The matrix organizational structure is a combination of two or more types of organizational structures. The matrix organization is the structure uniting these other organizational structures to give them balance. Usually, there are two chains of command where project team members have two bosses or managers. Often, one manager handles functional activities, and the other is a more traditional project manager. These roles are fluid and not fixed, as the balance of power between these two kinds of managers aren't organizationally defined. It will employ the best of both structures and management styles to strengthen strengths and make up for weaknesses. This way, 
If an organization is working on producing two products or services at the same time, they can organize both, and use that duality to their advantage, through the matrix organizational structure. Please see the chart to observe that a worker, W, is reporting to multiple managers while holding a position. At any given point of time, a worker W, is reporting to a project manager of specific project, as well as, a vice president of specific department. Why is it important to manage information in matrix organizational structure? Given the complexity of a matrix organizational structure, it's critical to have the right tools to make sure that team members are receiving their tasks in a clear and orderly fashion. Dual reporting may create confusion due to multiple lines of command. It is essential to have all project communication housed in one tool, a software. The tool should enable team members to see all of their tasks in one place, regardless of which manager has assigned the work to them. This enables them to manage their workflow more efficiently, marking their progress, and adding comments along the way for managers. They can also work on tasks by projects too, if they want to stay in one mindset before moving on to another project. Dear learners, this brings us to the end of our discussion on the current topic. Thank you for following the content. Best wishes for all your endeavors.